Welcome to We Chats with Brilliant People, hosted by Dr. Allison Rodius, Professor of Sports Psychology at John F. Kennedy University. In each episode, Allison talks to highly successful people in music, sport, and the boardroom. She digs into the mental training techniques that they use to ride out the waves that challenge them in work and in life. So enjoy these We Chats with Brilliant People. Welcome back to We Chats with Brilliant People. Thanks for being with us. Today I'm talking to Dr. Barry Cripps, who uh, is a brilliant person in sports psychology and I'm really excited to talk to him today. He's my mentor in sports psychology and guided me along the way for several years. He was also part of my PhD committee and uh, it's an honor to talk to him today. Just in full disclosure, we wanted to um, let you know why we're so dressed up. We're at the British Psychological Society Conference and we're about to go to the gala dinner and Barry has kindly agreed to be interviewed by me for the WeChat series. So welcome Barry. Good, thank you very much. So um, I wanted to focus a little bit on the kinds of mental preparation that you do uh, for yourself in, a, you know, in the sense of um, you give clients advice and you educate them on how to get themselves mentally prepared. But what kinds of things do you do to get yourself mentally prepared? Okay, I devised a five-part routine for working with clients um, of exercises that I picked up from um, a very interesting book by Eugene Herigel. Um, Zen in the Art of Archery mm -hmm. and then I worked for 16 years with the British Archery team and you came along and helped out for the last four years. Mm -hmm. We went through four Olympic cycles together and I mean archery is a perfect uh, activity sport for a really, um, a really concentrated mental approach and I used with all the archers this five part program Essentially, there were two uh, uh, somatic exercises, physical exercises, relaxation and breathing control, and then uh, two psychological exercises, concentration and mental rehearsal, going through your program, and then finally a self-confidence boosting exercise. Mm -hmm. And I still use that for myself, plus a little bit of self-hypnosis if I'm really ego-boosting self-hypnosis if I'm really wound up. So it, I think um, a lot of our viewers won't necessarily be familiar with those pieces. Okay. Could you talk a little bit more about each of those elements? Sure. The relaxation follows the um, progressive muscle relaxation, mm -hmm. which I've actually shortened to take a whole body tension, tensing all of the muscles in my body and face, and then letting them go. Mm -hmm. Second um, exercise is breathing, where I simply breathe in, hold my breath, and on the way out, exhalation, say easy, 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 and I think easy. That doesn't mean to say the exercise is going to be easy, mm. it's my mind is at ease. And what does that do for the re for your body? Do it, which, which one comes first? Does the mind relax the body or does the, the body relaxing relax the mind? Or? Well I suppose it's a little bit of both, but <clears throat> relaxation uh, using breathing mm. or breathing control is absolutely vital for athletes who might tend to choke because you feel it in the throat and if you can breathe easy mm. then a lot of the stress, a lot of the fear, a lot of the anxiety goes away mm. and um, we don't have to use the word easy I mean my daughter who was a, uh, a champion archer uh, used the phrase cool it baby, mm -hmm. cool it baby and that worked for her and that worked for her yeah. so one would pick up uh, yeah. an exercise, uh, a phrase, yeah. a self-talk phrase. Yeah. That, uh, but e but easy is the one that you use. Yes. Because that's what I'm after. Is what are you actually using yourself? It's easy, easy, easy. And then hold, and then easy, 
easy, easy. And and what do you feel when you do that, as, and as you do it, what what is inside? Well, I can feel any tension or stress sort of draining out mm -hmm. of the body. Mm -hmm. uh, because I've done it so many times as well, yeah. uh, I just it helps me empty my mind and focus on what we've got to do, the challenge ahead. Brilliant. Which could be a presentation. I mean, I'm terrified of talking to a hundred people. Are you? Yeah, even though... You never show it. No, I know, but it's an act. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an act uh, precipitated by these uh, relaxation exercises. So relaxation is a key to the way that you work with clients. It's a, it's a fundamental component yes, yes. to what you get across. Yes, it's part of uh, men's sana and corporate sana. Healthy mind, healthy body, relaxed body, relaxed mind. Mm. The other way around. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like, and I, I mean, I observed you for many years in action, but for the benefit of the people who are watching this, um, you know, it sounds like relaxation is just a really important piece of your mental preparation, not just mm -hmm. a key component in what you teach the athletes, but it seems like it's, and it seems like you've done it so for so many years mm -hmm. that it comes to you very quickly. Yes, it does. I mean, the whole package is about control. Yeah. Control of the situation so that one can present uh, in an enthusiastic and relaxed way. And if your audience sees you're relaxed, then they're happy. Yeah. But they can't stand looking at someone who's all nervous and on edge and yeah. loses their way and so on. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you also mentioned self-hypnosis? Yes. Can you... Um, just before we get there, though, yeah. there are two. There are two physical exercises. Mm. There are two psychological exercises. Mm. Uh, concentration is one of them. Yeah. And I imagine I'm up uh, in a spaceship. In a spaceship. In a spaceship, looking at that beautiful picture we see on Google of the Earth, mm -hmm. where we can see the beautiful colours, the clouds, we can see the whole of the Earth and I come zooming in very quickly as if I'm going at uh, a million miles an hour but it's not really that fast and I, as I come in I look at the continents Europe depends where I'm presenting in the southwest of England and I'll see Exeter and then I'll see the room that I'm going to be working in and then I will begin to think about actually being there it takes me into the next phase which is mental rehearsal of actually being there and starting off with a phrase like uh, a phrase that I've will relax me uh, good evening good morning good afternoon mm. uh, I'm really pleased to be here talking to you even though inside I might feel a bit nervous mm -hmm. um, doing that mental rehearsal of actually being there says to me you've been there you've done it you you've seen it mm -hmm. and uh, there's no problem looking at the uh, audience looking at the faces trying to eyeball everyone if mm -hmm. possible to make them feel that I'm talking to them mm -hmm. like a scattergun approach as the actors say as the actors say yeah. and then uh, was there another phase or is that yes there's one more um, uh, of self-hypnosis mm -hmm. or a confidence boosting exercise where because I train uh, psychologists and others health workers to use uh, hypnosis uh, I will then go into my own hip self-hypnosis routine which is about ego boosting boosting my self-confidence mm -hmm. to go through self uh, some affirmations You've been there, you're, you're feeling okay. Uh, phrases um, in the present tense about me um, all positive. Positive phrases in the present tense mm -hmm. about me. You're okay, you feel good, and so on. Mm -hmm. And then I come out of that and then try and go into the hall, lecture room, whatever. Mm -hmm. 
So I noticed you said it in the third person. Is that how you refer to it? You didn't say I, you said you. You. Well, I should have said I. You picked me up there. You've been well taught. Well trained. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all about whoever it is. It's all about me. Yeah. Uh, when you're doing it, it's all about you. So it's, I feel okay. Uh, I'm okay. I know mm. my stuff. Mm. I love my audience. I'm, re I'm pleased to be here. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've been working towards this for some while. Mm. I'm well prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, I think possibly the very best uh, preparation, however, is uh, in preparation. You know, prepare to succeed, succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, don't prepare, prepare to fail. Mm. Um, so my notes will be immaculate and clearly laid out. Uh, so that I don't lose my way. Mm. Preparation is really a theme that's coming across in um, when I'm talking to all these brilliant people, mm. not just in sports psychology but also in um, other performance arenas. Mm. Preparation is really becoming a key theme. Yes. You think that's important? I do. Preparation and timing, knowing when to stop, mm. when to move on, uh, when to pause, mm. Timing is immaculate. When to pause for laughter mm. and appreciation and applause. Of course, <laughs> of course. Uh, but not going on too long. Mm -hmm. So by doing that myself, it reinforces my belief in this when I'm talking to clients, mm -hmm. working with them. And when you're not necessarily feeling great, you know, you're not necessarily feeling confident, maybe you wake up one morning and you've got a big presentation to do, but you're not really feeling fantastic. You're either maybe feeling a little bit ill or, you know, just not a great day psychologically. How do you turn that around? Well, that's when it helps most, of course, mm. uh, and that's what we call training. Uh, when the chips are down, you know, it, you rely on your training and your history and uh, the past. Um, one of the tricks about that is possibly remembering, uh, going back to a time when everything was really going well, like receiving my PhD, walking up onto the stage mm -hmm. and shaking hands with the Vice-Chancellor. And actually being there at that moment and feeling I'm the greatest person in the world and uh, visualizing what I can see when I was there, uh, some auditory input, what I could hear mm. and how I felt, kinesthetic awareness, I felt really great. Mm -hmm. And I suppose uh, if I wake up and I'm not feeling too good, then that all of those exercises come together for to make things better. Mm -hmm. When you were training me, you inspired me to... Uh, I find you very inspirational in the way that you are, um, have an open mind to a lot of elements. Mm -hmm. um, so who, inspired, who has inspired you in psychology or in sports psychology? Um, in sports psychology it's difficult because I'm one of the gurus, the older guys mm -hmm. in there. I was yeah. writing at the beginning. Um, as a psychologist, uh, the people who have inspired me probably most are people like Hans Eysenck, uh, who is my great hero, and some managers of sports teams. Mm. Um, Woodward, for instance, mm. who managed the England rugby team. Mm. Uh, been knighted for it. Uh, tremendous uh, inspiration of that's how it's done with a team. Because mm -hmm. um, when one is working with a team, one has to be more on the ball than, than when one is working with individuals. Mm -hmm. Individuals are more forgiving, but uh, a team, when you've got a room full of rugby players, for instance, uh, you know, they're very anxious to trip you up sometimes. All for in the name of fun. In the name of fun, yeah. <laughs> and find out your little weaknesses. Yes, of course. Yeah. Well, we have come, we're coming to the end of our little WeChat. 
Do you mind if I ask you the, the final questions, the, the quick fire questions that Carry I have pre prepared? The quiz, the quiz. The quiz, the quiz. And there's no right or wrong answer. No, you okay. won't be graded on this. Um, I always ask this uh, first question of everybody. If you knew you couldn't fail, what would you try to do tomorrow? Become an airline pilot. Good answer. Um, champagne or a cup of tea? Tea first and then champagne. All right. <laughs> Would you rather be a better singer or a better cook? Cook. I don't stand a chance at singing, <laughs> but I can cook. Um, if you could meet one person, dead or alive, who would that be? R.B. Cattell, the, um, the, the psychologist who was born in England, mm. who um, wrote Cattell's 16PF, Personality uh, Factor, 16 person, R.B. Cattell. Alright, good answer. Yeah. And last but not least, uh, ocean or lake? Lake. Lake. I get, I get seasick on that. You get seasick. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure yeah. and an honour. And I wanted to officially say for the people watching the WeChats that you have been an amazing person in my life and I wanted to thank you very much for everything that you've done for me. Well, thank you for that that uh, compliment I, I didn't realize I'd impacted on you so much but I'm glad that uh, our way has been a true way we've never uh, tried to fake it or anything we've, no, we're I, using we're using psychology yeah, properly as yeah, it should be used yeah absolutely well Good. thank you very much and uh, I wish you well and let's hope we have a, a good time at the gala yeah, later sure. on we're sitting with you, aren't we? Absolutely. Yeah. On the on the fanciest table. I'm going to watch you don't drink too much. No, of course. <laughs> I <won't. laughs> no, I won't do that, of course. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Tune in next time for Wee Chats with Brilliant People in Sports Psychology. Bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed these Wee Chats. You can follow Wee Chats with Brilliant People on Twitter at Wee Chats and Facebook, and subscribe to the podcast series on iTunes or any Droid platform. We Chats with Brilliant People.